Hello everyone, my name is Madison and welcome back to Hop and Hop and today I'll be teaching you the basics of frog classification. So first we're going to start with very simple and easy information, the difference between a frog, a toad, and a tree frog. So I never thought this would be such a huge argument on frog TikTok and even on my YouTube videos when people call my toads frogs or my frogs toads. So I'm just going to make it real simple and explain how not all frogs are toads, but all toads are frogs. So now with frogs, we're looking at amphibians. There's three different types of amphibians, clearly working with frogs. Now tree frogs and toads are frogs, but frogs are not toads, if you understand what I mean. Now let me make it a little bit more simple with some visuals. So we have frogs, we have tree frogs, and we have toads. So here we have Fifi. Fifi's clearly a toad. He's got the bumpy dry skin and the big round belly. Well, Fifi's a toad, but he is a frog as well. Now we can see that Fifi isn't a salamander. So we're looking at amphibian, frog, and then another category, toad. So when you call Fifi a toad, it's just a more accurate name for what he is. But calling him a frog is just another broad term because he is an amphibious frog. Now look at my Cuban tree frog, Bartley. He is obviously not a toad, so you can't call him a toad. However, he is a frog. So he's an amphibian who is a frog who is a tree frog. Now look at this American bullfrog. We know he's an amphibian and we know he's a frog, but he's not a tree frog or toad. He's simply a frog. There's no lower classification either than the species name. Now how do you identify if it is a frog, tree frog, or toad? While this all varies species to species, frogs typically have a wet, slender body and they're not going to have little grippy hands like tree frogs. While tree frogs are very similar, having slender, wet bodies, they have little grubby hands for climbing, hence the tree frog. <laughs> Now toads have bumpy dry bodies that are typically a bit more round because they're designed for burrowing. So that is the very basics of classifying a frog, tree frog, or toad. Now to get a tad bit more scientific, and I'm going to apologize in advance, I'm probably going to butcher some of these names, and I'm sorry, I'm still learning how to pronounce them, so I am going to type them just so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So when it comes to classifying any animal, we use this type of categorization list. Now the first classification and the most broad is domain. This establishes what type of cells the organism has. Now we are going to be looking at eukarya. This means the cells have nuclei. Now next comes the kingdom. We're looking at animalia because they're animals. The next classification is the phalum. They are a part of the chordata phalum because amphibians develop with a dorsal nerve cord and a notochord and a post anal tail at different stages of their life. Now their class is amphibia because they're amphibians. Now as we go down the list, you can see that we're getting more precise with what species we're looking at, whereas you go up the list, it gets much more broad. Now next comes order in our list, and this is what I was previously explaining, how we have amphibians, and then we go down to frogs. Their order is anura, which just means frog. Now the next three classifications are family, genus, and species. Today I'm going to be identifying my fire-bellied toads. Now these names are very long, and I will 100% say them wrong, so I'm just going to have them up on the screen. <laughs> now we're looking at this family classification. I'm just going to call it B1 because that is a very long name. Now this family breaks down into two genuses, BA and BO. So the fire bellies I own are a part of the B1 family and a part of the BO genus. Their species is Bombina orientalis. I think I said that right. So if you're still a bit confused, let me explain it one more time. So we know that they're the class amphibian. Now there's three different types of amphibians, so we need to break it down to the order. They're a neura, which just means frog. Now what I was explaining earlier is basically what the family is in a very broad term of saying if it's a frog, a toad, or a tree frog. However, families aren't that broad and they're going to be way more precise than just saying if they're a frog, a toad, or a tree frog. The family B1 is just a very precise classification of a particular group of species of frogs. We are looking at the 10 different species of fire-belly toads in this family B1. Now we're clearly just trying to get it down to the one species we have, so we're going to break it down just one more time in the genus. So in BA genus, there's two species of frogs that are identified underneath it. Clearly, these frogs don't look like fire-belly toads. Then we look at the other genus, BO, and there's eight species, and these kind of look like fire-belly toads. So within those eight species, we have the Bombina orientalis. And this species of fire-belly toads is just the basic one you'll see in most pet stores. And a question you might be asking is you keep saying these fire-belly toads are frogs. 
Well, these guys are kind of the confusing ones. I was talking about how there's exceptions to these categorizations of frogs, tree frogs, and toads. While fire belly toads do have bumpy skin, they live predominantly in water and they have slimy skin. So they are actually frogs, but when they decided the name of the species, they said fire belly toads because they kind of look like toads. But water toads, so frogs. <laughs> so I hope this helped you out. I know it's a bit confusing. There's a whole lot of Latin names. They're really long and they all kind of sound the same. And if you're looking to become a vet or really anything in the science field, you're really going to want to understand this well. But I hope this helped you out. If you enjoyed You Know What To Do, leave a like and subscribe for more and have a happy day. Goodbye.